All right then, so now that we've dispensed with the formalities and taken care of our files window, as you can see here, I can actually even collapse that so you can see this a little bit better. Well, what I've got here to begin with is a simple list and what we're going to be looking at right now in this tutorial is how to style lists using CSS. So let me strip away anything that's extraneous at the moment and I'll just keep things nice and neat. And as you can see here, I've got a very simple HTML unordered list, UL close UL. UL means, of course, unordered list. Within that unordered list, we have a number of list items. And as you can see, open and close list items. Inside of that list item, we have an open A tag and a closing A tag, which produces the links that we see here in our split screen design and code view. So in my design view, I can actually see these as links. They're not really going anywhere. You can see that the href is just equaling the pound symbol or hash marks or whatever you want to call that and um, that's just a null link at the moment it doesn't go anywhere but it does everything a link does like for example um, if we switch on over to live view you can see what your links look like and you see ah oh, there it is it's given me the finger very rude but it works it's a link and you can see that list items normally by default will have um, simple bullet associated with it in this case the default is just a simple circle well I'm gonna go back to my regular view as you can see here and now I can select these things and do whatever I want alright so now that we've done that the simple thing is is um, it's time to style this using CSS. Now, this is something that's really extremely simple to do when you're working with CSS. It's not difficult at all. Uh, first thing we're going to do is you'll notice that everything inside here is within a UL or unordered list. So, why don't we define this new CSS rule and we will go directly to a HTML tag and that tag will be the UL. Alright, um, before we do anything else let's just take note of this. Uh, it's asking me where do you want this rule to be defined? Um, at the moment the default says this document only. However, the vast majority of times, I would say 99% of the time, what I'm going to be doing is creating a new style sheet if one already doesn't exist. If you have one that does exist, I would choose the external style sheet always before doing it in this document only. However, here is my exception. I'm just showing you how to work with just links as I mentioned before and I don't want to get you confused with any other HTML code. Um, so I'm going to do it in this document only but as I promised before the end of the tutorial we'll take these links and these ideas that we've implemented them and we'll try to implement them rather into the CSS layouts that we've defined already. So that liquid layout, that fixed layout, we'll take a look at them, we'll see how they can work. So, as I mentioned, here's the unordered list and yes, reluctantly, I'm saying this document only. So I click OK and we're going to ask this document to do a number of things. Well, since I am not actually inside of a CSS document that's controlling the entire layout, uh, normally, as you saw, if you did follow along with the CSS layout tutorial, you notice that I like to uh, tell all my students to use a universal selector to put everything to margin of zero and padding of zero. However, we don't have the luxury of the universal selector here. So I'm just going to add under the category of box margin of zero, same for all, and a padding of zero, same for all. Now before we do anything else, like I could apply this, and as you can see, when you do apply it, depending on where you are, uh, you should see, you know, things are really attempting to squeeze up right against the edge of your browser. And my body actually does have a little bit of padding on it, that's why this is not squished up right against it. However, we still see a little bit of those dots. So what I'm going to ask you to do is to go to the list category and under list style type here we could have said give me a disk, give me a circle, give me a square, lowercase Roman uh, numerals or uppercase, whatever the case may be. However, in this particular instance I'm going to say none and if you press apply you'll see that those lists 
disappeared. Those bullets disappeared. And all we have left now is our lengths. And that's our first step in getting this to work. You'll also notice here that I've got the style tags inside of my head tags of my HTML section. And that's because it's an example of an internal CSS. Remember, please remember, this is not something I recommend you to do on a regular basis. I want you to externalize your CSS. I'm only doing it this way just so you could see what's happening not only in the CSS styles but also in the HTML. And this way we're not going to be confused and at the end of the video tutorial I'll be externalizing all of this and we'll be placing these inside of an actual layout. Alright, well that's really interesting. I mean there's nothing wrong with that. Um, however, what I may want to do in certain instances is to add a background element to this bulleted list. Well, let's see what I can do with that. How would I go about doing that? Well, in this case, I want to be affecting the LI or list items. So let's come in here and let's add a new HTML tag that we'll be redefining. And it's going to be the LI. Yes, this document only, reluctantly. And once we're here, what I want you to do is, um, first and foremost, let's add a background image. So in the background image, I'm going to browse. And you'll notice that if you are working with the files that were provided for you, you'll see that there's an images folder next to your Just Links folder. And I'm going to open that up, and you'll see there's something here called check. It's just a little check mark or something. So let's say you didn't want a circle, a square, or anything else, like a lowercase Roman numeral. Instead, you wanted, you know, your own graphic, like this check, for example. So I'll choose that graphic. Now, once that graphic's chosen, there's a couple of things that are going to happen. Let's take a look. If I apply this, you can see, whoa, what in the world has gone on? Well, first of all, a list item is going to be all the way across. Why is that? Because it's a block level element. As a block level element, unless you define its actual width, it'll span the entire area that it's, that's containing it. So in other words, in this case, the body contains it and it's just going off across. Well, clearly that's not working for us. So here's what I'm going to ask you to do. We'll say background repeat, no repeat. Don't repeat this thing, just give me one of them. Alright, great, we're making progress, but it's still not where we need it to be. So, let's take a look at what else we can do. Well, in the list item, we can also go to our box model, and since we are dealing with what's inside of the list item, I want to push things off the edge by using padding. So I could say padding left, and I know it's about 21 pixels across this check mark. So if I were to come in here, I could say, well, give me about like 30 pixels. And if I press apply, perfect. As you can see, now we've got some extra space in here. No problems. Now, if you wanted to have more space, of course, you could have you know, come in here, added padding at the bottom, and you could see that they're much wider apart. It's really up to you. Um, if I just leave that at the default, it should be just fine. And as you can see, it's got all my elements in place. My check mark is here. If you wanted to, you could uh, reposition some of these elements then simply by going to your list item. And as you can see in the background, you know, you could uh, define exactly where you want the positioning to be. And I could say start, top left, and that's pretty much what we got here, you know. But if I wanted to, I could have said on the bottom or on the right or centered or whatever the case may be. But no real need to do that if you just need it on the left-hand side, which is the default. So what's happening here is we've pushed it over by using padding and we can now see these particular list items with their own graphic. If we were to preview this in the browser, let's just do this in Firefox. And as I wait for that to approach, you can see there's my finger, and it's telling me that I've got a bunch of links here, and they all have their own little list item. And like I said, if you need a little bit more space between them, easy enough to do just by adding some padding on the bottom. So that's a little bit about working with a list item, and how to add your own image for the bullets.